Welcome to Pepper Smooth Glowworms, a channel dedicated to hot chili peppers and coldly glowing glowworms. <coughs> well, it is the 6th of June 2023 and it is time for a little update on my colony of Sardinian glowworms that I have kept now for almost 10 years. Uh, next year it will be 10 years and the most recent generation is generation 25. Uh, but I still have a lot of eggs and they are currently still hatching. Batch number one. Still are they hatching. Batch number two, noticeably larger than the very small batch number one. And they are all still, also still larvae hatching. Batch number three, where I found the first larvae hatching just today. So there's still a lot of production still going on. And even earlier, I still have two adult females um, that had contact to a male. So they could potentially be fertilized and lay some eggs, but I don't think so. But I'll keep them separated. Maybe they will produce some eggs. Yeah, and here um, I have the larvae of generation 25, um, a first and a second batch. And um, yeah, um, the first batch um, has already grown quite a bit. They have been uh, through some molds, but the second batch is, um, most of them are about to mold. You can see this on the little um, line on the dorsal plates. They are quite fat, if you will, and they are about to shed their skin to grow. Um, yeah, I'll feed them some freshly collected freshwater snails from my uh, metaka tub outside. And I think the larger ones uh, will receive a crushed juvenile giant African land snail. And what I also still have is four individuals of the previous generation, generation 24. Um, two uh, individuals are about to pupate as it seems. I guess it will be two females. One is very big and the other one is also not too small, so it looks more like uh, it will uh, turn into a male pupa, but uh, a female pupa, but maybe it will uh, turn out male. So there's still hope for uh, another, breed another breeding pair or another breeding triplet. Um, and also two larvae that do not look uh, too well. Uh, I think they are the stragglers that uh, had some kind of internal problems maybe or they were um, did not develop uh, quite right. But uh, I gave them some uh, beetle jelly. Maybe um, they will collect some strength and also there's a slight, slight chance that they may uh, turn into males. Mm. But for now I think uh, I'm almost uh, good to go and generation 25 um, should uh, go well. Um, a bit of a problem that um, the first batch has already um, developed quite a bit and the second batch is uh, a bit behind after that, but um, it should work out. Um, yeah, I have been breeding them for a very long time, as I said, almost a decade. Um, uh, it is safe to say that they are heavily inbred, sadly and disgustingly, but it is what it is. Um, but uh, they seem to be fine. The only thing that I have, I think, um, I have observed is that the fertility seems to have dropped, but um, that's uh, for a while now, and it seems that the population size seems to be um, rather constant. It does not much grow or shrink, which is a good thing um, for me, at least. I don't produce too much larvae um, that I wouldn't uh, that I wouldn't be able to take care of. So, 
but it also means that I cannot give away uh, too much larvae. But mm, I think that's fine. Let's see uh, how it goes with uh, the next generation. Yeah, and um, the springtails that I'm using in these uh, yeah, semi-bioactive setups, um, I like uh, to <laughs> cultivate the little silvery ones that are um, uh, I um, inoculated the um, containers for generation 25 of them because they um, just appeared in my glowing colonies uh, over time and I guess I'm uh, somewhat sentimentally attached to them because I have kept them for so long. They uh, survived in the uh, flower pot and the um, planting containers of my chili peppers uh, for the time I was only relying on uh, sponge cloth for my enclosures, um, my glowworm enclosures. And then I um, used them for isopod enclosures and from there they returned to my semi-bioactive uh, glowworm setups. But in the uh, big enclosure um, there are some longer uh, springtails, a different species. I think it uh, appeared from the soil that I used, uh, which is a uh, a jungle mix, if you will, a uh, um, uh, ready-to-buy soil mix. Um, I think they came from there and I basically have no reason to dislike them, but I want to uh, focus on my little silvery ones, so those will not be propagated, but I will try to raise the numbers of the silvery ones. Just a little, a little side note. Yeah, and I think I will transfer the four individuals of generation 25 uh, 24, the previous generation, into a somewhat nice little, um, uh, what's the word, a di display uh, enclosure, mm, almost, um, at least compared to these simple clip boxes, and maybe mm, at least I will be able to observe some nice glowing when they turn into big adult females, the two pupae. Um, or about to pupate individuals that I um, observed here. So I will put them into the other container and that should be it for now. Yeah. Goodbye. <coughs> the small lava that is about to pupate did really pupate <coughs> female. So the hopes for getting a few more breeding pairs, they grow smaller. I have put some turtle vine in there, um, which also doubles as a nice food for the giant African land snails. Turtle vine seems to be growing um, somewhat well. It is uh, shooting out little roots into the soil, so I guess I will have to cut it sometime. <laughs>